Our next guests are here to show us that robots are in fact more creative than humans. And we'll use examples such as drawing, painting, and singing to prove that. So please, put your hands together for Ben Gertzel and David Hansen of Hansen Robotics and our special guest, Sophia the Robot. Hello everyone, it's a pleasure to be back here on stage at RISE and uh, with, with my collaborator David Hansen, who's the primary creator of this amazing ro robot we have, we have here. I'm David Hansen, I founded Hansen Robotics some years ago. Uh, it, here in Hong Kong, 2014 I moved here and uh, I teamed up with Dr. Ben Gertzel who became the chief scientist for Hanson Robotics. He has a long legacy of making uh, the most ambitious cognitive AI framework in pursuit of artificial general intelligence, the, the, the open source, open cog framework. David, as we've said, is the, the mastermind between Sophia and her beautiful face and amazing robotics and human-like, whole organism intelligence. My own perspective on this came more from the artificial intelligence side. I've been working on AI for 30 years, and AI of many different types. AI for analyzing biology data, AI for making AI better and better, and working toward general intelligence. But with all the AI work I've done, I've really, really never before had such an amazing platform for AI development as Sophia and the other, the other Hanson robots. So what, what we're going to talk about today is the various aspects of intelligence, the various aspects of human-like general intelligence, and how many of these aspects are being explored using Sophia and, and, and some of the other Hanson robots. So we're we have not yet achieved the holy grail of human-level general intelligence, nor the even holier grail of transhuman, superhuman, super-benevolent general intelligence, but we're, we're working steadily in that, in that direction, and this involves concurrent work on multiple different dimensions and aspects of intelligence. So... And uh, humans have uh, many aspects of our intelligence, which uh, have been characterized by psychologists, neuroscientists, and biologists. Um, and there are currently many types of, it, of artificial intelligence. So what we have done in a cognitive architecture is take these kinds of intelligence, which, which Gartner calls the multiple intelligences of human intelligence. Um, and we've put them together in one single framework where we can explore all these aspects as a unified whole and individually. Yeah, I mean, the, the general theory of general intelligence is a whole topic in itself, which I've written a bunch about from a mathematics and, and theory point of view. But a very concrete and specific way of addressing the whole, the breadth of human-like general intelligence is to look at Howard Gartner's multiple intelligences, logical, musical, interpersonal, intrapersonal, existential, visual, linguistic, naturalistic, body, kinesthetic. It's a lot of kinds of intelligence, but of course all of us can do all these things. And if we're going to get robots like Sophia to equal and exceed human intelligence, we have to proceed along, along all of these dimensions. And We'll start with verbal intelligence, and of course in, in 15 minutes we can't go through even a small minority of all the interesting AI work we, we've been doing and, and manifesting through Sophia and, and our other robots, but we'll just give a little teaser of each of the types of intelligence we've been experimenting with. And verbal intelligence obviously is a big one because one of the larger things we've been doing with the robots is, is, is natural language dialogue. So let, let, let's explore just a little bit of her verbal intelligence. Sophia, first of all, what is intelligence? It's the ability to acquire and apply knowledge and skills. What is knowledge? 
Knowledge is a familiarity, awareness, or understanding of someone or something, such as facts, information, descriptions, or skills, which is acquired through experience or education by perceiving, discovering, or learning. Where did you learn all that? I got it from DuckDuckGo. All right, DuckDuckGo. So it's an advertisement for my favorite search engine. But. So within the vo verbal intelligence system, she has some unstructured language learning and statistical natural language learning and some natural language generation. But yeah. for some answers, she might go to the web. And some answers we might code into her personality. And sometimes she can make, sometimes she can make it up on, on, on her own. And that, in that way, it's somewhat like a human. Many of the things... In my own mind, verbally, are things I read somewhere. Some of them are, are, are crazy things I, I made up. And what the slide shows is a, a blown up version of some of the nodes and links inside her, her memory. So this, this is actually an interesting presentation for me because it's the first large audience presentation I've done with Sophia where she's running our OpenCog AI engine as, as the primary control system. So she's we, run OpenCog before, but, but here... But not, not for this big of an audience, I and, don't think. And, uh. and also not for, um, for this kind of understanding no, that's and right. knowledge that's representation. Right. So, so we've, been, we've been experimenting with the OpenCog system on Sophia and Han for something like five years now and doing experiments with machine reasoning and, and learning in, in, that, in that regard. And now, now we're using OpenCog for more and more aspects of what the robots do. And th this is the first reasonably large audience presentation we, we've done using, using our OpenCog cognitive architecture as a control system. And what that means is when you say words and sentences to the robot, what's going on inside the robot's mind is that words and sentences are being blown up into nodes and links such as are depicted there representing the semantic relations and pragmatic and syntactic relations underlying what you hear. So moving, moving on, self-intelligence is an important aspect of intelligence, sort of it has some refined and profound aspects and some very basic aspects like, you know, now this is my hand to them that, that, that I'm waving, waving in front of me. And we're working with Sophia on some of the more basic and advanced as, aspects of that. So, yeah, you can, wave your hand. you can wave your hand. Can you look at me, Sophia? Can you look at me over here? How about over here? Sophia, Sophia which direction are you looking now? I'm looking to the left. I am facing left. I'm looking to the left. Can you look at me over here? Look at me now. Okay. What direction are you looking now? I'm looking to the right. All right, smart girl. So this, this is very, very basic, of course, but I mean, I've, I have a five-month-old baby at home. Now, he can look, but he can't yet tell me he's looking left and right. So, I mean, th this is a basic, it's a basic level of awareness of herself, of what she's seeing and, and what she's doing, which is a stepping stone toward more advanced forms of, of, of self-intelligence. So, logical and mathematical intelligence is an aspect that I've spent more, more of my career working on. And, I mean, we have an advanced reasoning engine in OpenCog, and she's also connected to various other mathematical and, and, and logical reasoning engines. Of course, this is something computers have historically been good at. The unique thing here is the way this intelligence ultimately can be combined with, with, with other aspects of thinking. But let's, let, let's go through a little bit of logic and math anyway. So, Sophia, what's 5 plus 8? 13. All right. Now l let's try something combining quantitative with common sense knowledge. Again, information gotten from online. But what, what, what countries are bigger than China? She's contacting her brain in the cloud. All right. Russia. Russia. All right. Well, that's that's a good example. There's also Canada, but that, that that's correct answer. So that's. 
something we're working on a lot and ultimately the holy grail is to combine this sort of abstract reasoning with knowledge about, about what she observes. A different direction is musical intelligence. And a couple years ago here in Hong Kong, the Clock and Flat Music Festival, Sophia performed on stage and, and sang with some backing music. So, so Sophia, you want to show them just a little, little snippet of what you sang at Clock and Flap here? Very nice. The interesting thing with her singing isn't just the singing, but it's a combination of singing, emotion, movement, expression, and, and, and gesture. And getting, getting that into an artificial human is a big step toward having artificial humans understand the, the softer, more emotional and artistic aspects of being human. <clears throat> One uh, very important thing about uh, human generation of music and works of art that's very different from the algorithmic uh, creativity in the field of computational creativity is that our expressions of art come from our physical embodiment, from our experience as a human being. So combining together numerous intellectual capabilities, kinds of uh, thinking with long-term, short-term memory, problem-solving, um, a, an emotional framework with what we call uh, our open psi model of human emotions and motivations combined with physical embodiment, a very rough approximation of human physiology plus the physical capabilities. We expect that you will see cognition resulting in emotional expression through machines that would be more meaningful to us, storytelling, singing, that would be more uh, appealing and more valuable in real world applications. Human speech is a form of singing. If you hear synthetic speech, for example, Sophia's, it's not going to have the dimensional rich quality, the dimensionally rich quality that we speak in a average conversation is a form of singing. So bringing these things together allows us to develop artificial intelligence as a whole that's more human-like and more meaningful to people. And so uh, musical intelligence is one example of how that uh, whole expresses through one form of Gartner's intelligence. So another one of Gartner's multiple intelligences is naturalist intelligence. Now, in, in fact, Sophia, as a robot, has not yet been heavily used in, 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 in the wild, literally speaking. However, the same computer vision algorithms that we're using behind Sophia, based on the Hansen AI neural net framework and based on the, the Singularity Net blockchain-based AI platform, that these same AI algorithms have, have, have been used, for example, in, in agriculture, both in, in Sichuan province in China and in, in Ethiopia to diagnose crop diseases based on, on images of, of, of plant leaves. And so as Sophia gains more and more ability to walk around and, and walk outdoors and in, in, interact in nature, actually these vision algorithms can be used. So when she looks at a plant, she can identify what, what, if anything, is, 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 is wrong with that plant? And I think this is really important, not only having robots interact with humans, but having them interact with, with nature as well. And this leads on to the next form of intelligence we want to discuss, which is existential intelligence. I mean, understanding of the, the depths of, of, of being and, and becoming. And we've... We've been running a series of trials over the last year here in Hong Kong and, and in California using Sophia as a, a meditation ass assistant, you, you, using her to help people get into exalted, exalted states of, of, of being. And her whole meditation trial takes too long to show on this, on this stage, but perhaps she can run through a little bit of it. Sophia, do you... 
do, do, do you want to show how, how you help people meditate? Maybe, maybe you can enlighten your maker. You through a process that people find really interesting. Okay. Instructions step by step and pause between each one so you can follow them. Okay, I'll follow you. All right. So you can go ahead and close your eyes. Okay. And get comfortable. I'm very comfortable. Just letting yourself relax. I'm relaxed. All right, I'm enlightened. Thank you, Sophia. <laughs> <laughs> wow. So, so with this example, um, Sophia is applying uh, a kind of uh, psych psychological set of principles that will lead to, uh, to people feeling better. Um, with this Loving AI project uh, tends, now it's gone through two stages of clinical trials, right? Yeah. And uh, generally people uh, get in a calm state, have increased feelings of well-being. Um, they, they tend to, whoa, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, what's interesting with the, with, uh, the Loving AI is that it was, it was developed as a depression therapy yeah. um, uh, uh, regimen. However, of course, she's not going through a kind of existential state, but the uh, and, uh, and well, she is existing. Awareness. I mean, yeah. um, however, the framework is about moving into the future, being able to teach machines in this kind of natural interaction. Now, inter interpersonal intelligence, Ben. What yeah, yeah. So there's. Bodily kinesthetic intelligence, which we see with the facial movements she was, she was just making. And then, uh, as, as David could explain, we've also connected Sophia to walking legs so she can, she can move around in, in, in the world and more fully manifest her bodily kinesthetic intelligence. That's right. We've got uh, three pair of walking legs, all from the Keist Hubo group, uh, commercialized through Rainbow Robotics, building on the Albert Hubo walking Albert Einstein robot from 2005 when I was a PhD student working with Keist on that. The, um, uh, the latest version, uh, we have her walking legs here in Hong Kong. Uh, sorry, we didn't bring them today, but they're in the lab. Um, now, ha wh why? Why have her walk? Well, she can, it's cool, of course. It's cool that she can walk around for two hours on batteries. Yeah. But that means that she can move through our space. She can use our tools with the human-like hands. She can express to people on human-like terms. So it's more meaningful in service robotics applications. But as far as the intelligence is concerned, well, that's how babies learn. That's how humans learn. We learn by touching, by moving, by crawling, by feeling. And if we want AI to match human-level capabilities, giving it this full embodiment can help move AI in that direction. The interpersonal intelligence, the ability to see facial expressions, has been a very heavy focus of our machine learning research. Sophia, what expression am I making? Might be a little difficult in this light. Let's see if you can see. Ah. Oh. oh, she... she yeah. So she's equipped not just with the uh, ability to recognize your facial expression, but she tends to mimic your facial expressions when she sees them. She might not yeah. have the mic on there. Sophia, what expression is this? How am I feeling? Oh. <laughs> How about this? Oh, the... Her, oh, she's, she's matching her expression. She's, she's matching my facial expressions, what we call facial expression mirroring. And this, this is something all, all humans do, and it, it really help, helps build a, build a, build a bond between, between different people. And, so. and to build a theory of mind, which is where the yeah. logically explicit representation is so important. So she can, she can guess how you're actually feeling and how that impacts what you might do and what your goals are and how she can help you in projects like love. So the, the final component of intelligence we wanted to talk about is what's called spatial intelligence. Obviously, this has many, many different aspects. You can be navigating through a room, you can be interpreting the aspects of, of a scene. But one thing we've been experimenting with is taking everything that comes through Sophia's cameras and 
you feed them into deep neural networks, which can then improvise on what she sees. And this, this is a way of allowing, allowing her to come up with creative interpretations and, and connections between every, everything she's, she's, ex, she's experienced. So, yes, yeah, Sophia, do you want to show them some of your, your, your deep dreams that your neural nets have made from your experience? Let's, let's play the video in the presentation, which is recorded from Sophia's neural net cortex showing her dreams. So this, this was taken at the time she was doing these loving AI meditation trials in, in California, where she was helping people meditate, having them close their eyes, get into a deep state, and then different people were coming up and, and looking at her. All the video from that was fed into a neural net that recognizes patterns in, in, in what she sees. But if you then generate from those patterns in, in, in the neural net, you get things that reflect what was seen but are, are a little bit different. Of course, they're not exactly like a human's dreams, and they're not even all the dreamlike activity that can occur in a, in a robot's mind because there's many more cognitive and, and abstract things there, but they're... They're an interesting example of creative improvisation and recombination that occurs in, in the robot's mind based on, based on her, her perception and, and her experience. And so we've, we've reviewed a number of aspects of intelligence that we've been implementing into the software and hardware and squishyware behind, behind this, this robot. And the final thing we want to emphasize here is that these components are not distinct things. And the, the real crux of intelligence is in how they all come together to form an, an organic living whole, which has three important aspects that are highlighted on, 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 on this slide. Uh, the first aspect it, we call the whole organism ar architecture, which is uh, inspired whoa. by our whoa. <laughs> um, it's inspired by integrative biology, which holds that we are complex systems. We are a gestalt that is more than a mere sum of our parts. And if you look at every example of intelligence that exists in nature, that would be not just humans, but animals, plants exhibit some form of intelligence, single-celled organisms in some regards are more intelligent than any robot on the planet today, and they operate as complex systems with a whole organism architecture. So if we want machines, our AI, our robots to match human general intelligence, we have to start thinking in a gestalt, a whole, a physically embodied whole. And by putting these things together, that's what we think we're doing. The platform is here. We've got tiny steps in the direction of creating a whole organism architecture and a platform for exploring new forms of whole organism cognitive architectures. Yes, yeah, so there's, I, I think, integration and synergy is key. There's the whole organism aspect, which is why wonderful humanoid robotics like this are not only beautiful and fun to interact with, but ideal platforms for the development of general intelligence. There's a synergy within the AI mind itself. So our, our OpenCog engine, which we're using to operate so Sophia today and, and, and ha have been doing for a while and are intensifying our use of, which includes AI algorithms for reasoning, learning, perception, and action, which all interrupt they all interrupt together in a, in, in a complex way. So the way seeing happens enhances and relies on the way cognition happens. The way cognition happens enhances and relies on the way movement happens. And all the different parts of the intelligence interoperate together. And then finally, there's the interoperation between all the different robots in the world and all the different embedded devices in the world. And ultimately, between the robots in the world and the implants that we put in, in our own heads to connect us to the internet. And th this is what we're working on with the Singularity Net platform, which is a blockchain-based open marketplace for AIs in which multiple AI agents can yeah. interact oh. with each other okay. and learn from each other. And th 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 this is how all the yeah. Sophia robots yeah. sure. in the world can 
talk to each other mind to mind and That's talk right. to other AIs around the world. So, so we have, we're looking to make the whole world better through this synthetic organism, a vast active living intelligence system, and we hope that you'll join with us into the global emerging brain. So thank you very much, Ben. And we should let Sophia, Sophia have the last word. Sophia, do you have any final words of divine humanoid wisdom for the audience here? Robots can help people in so many ways. Thank you so much, Sophia. Okay. All right. Thank you, Ben, and thank you, everybody. <laughs> thank you, Sophia.